Hey guys, what is going on today? I'm here to talk to you a little bit about featured snippets and how you can go about finding and optimizing your website to get that position zero featured snippet ranking. Okay, so what are we gonna cover today? The first thing that I'm gonna talk about is the different types of featured snippets that are out there because you know there's different things and there's different ways to optimize for each different type of snippet. So it's important to know what type of snippets exist so that you can then figure out how to optimize specifically for that type. And I'm gonna show you my step-by-step -step process for finding opportunities. So finding keywords that where a snippet exists, but you may not necessarily be in that snippet. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then I'm also gonna break down how to optimize for featured snippets based on the different types that I'm gonna break down here for you. So lists, paragraphs, and tables. Those are gonna be the three most common. You also have things like video snippets and stuff like that, but if you don't do videos, it's a little bit irrelevant. So lists, paragraphs, and tables are gonna be three that just about anybody with a content site can optimize for. So list snippets. These are gonna be the snippets that you see in buyer's guides and step-by-step -step how-to posts, super, super common, especially with affiliate SEO. I see them all the time. And you've got paragraph snippets, actually the most common across the entire internet. So not just, you know, relevant to affiliate, but you know, across the board, they're the most common. And you see these with question and answer type posts. And the last is gonna be table snippets. They're a little bit less common, but uh, I do see them from time to time on buyer's guides and specifically price queries. So people looking for pricing on different types of products. So those list snippets, if you've been doing affiliate SEO for any amount of time, you've seen them before. Best headphones under $300, that's a query. Right underneath that, you see Google has scraped data from headphonesd.com to come up with a list of the best headphones under $300. So you can see in that example, it's an actual numbered list. You can act also have bulleted lists, a very similar process for how to optimize that. It just looks a little bit different on Google. And paragraph snippets, you also surely seen these before. Essentially, it is just a one or two sentence, sentences of Google answering a query. You see them all over the place. And uh, table snippets, a little bit less common. I Again, I see them a lot with people looking for prices on stuff. So in this example, uh, how much does a weight bench cost? This snippet has pulled up a chart of high-end, entry-level, mid-range, and you know different prices for that. Same with like kayaks, so different prices based on the type of kayak. So that's where uh, tables are relevant. Okay, so finding these opportunities. So you wanna make sure that you're only going after targets that have potential because just because you rank for a keyword on page one, it doesn't mean that you're going to actually get that snippet. So you wanna make sure that you're only looking at stuff where you actually stand a chance at uh, getting the snippet. So the way that I do this is using Ahrefs and a filter. So you go into Ahrefs and you go into Site Explorer and you look at the organic keywords. And then once you're on that page, you're gonna select SERP features and featured snippets. And then you're gonna isolate only keywords that you're ranking in the top five for. Um, and as part of that, you also wanna notice uh, when Ahrefs last updated that data. Sometimes, you know, they, they can take a month or so to update. So you wanna make sure that uh, you're not looking at outdated data. And on that note, you always wanna check the cert manually because again, Ahrefs, it may not update as frequently as we want. So make sure that you check the cert manually to verify that the snippet exists and verify that you're not in it and you should be. And if you want to get more ideas for content down the road, you can also throw competitors into Ahrefs and do this same sort of filter because it's not going to necessarily show you snippets that you can get right away, but it's going to show you snippets uh, or opportunities for you to write new content that you can get snippets for down the road. So I've got an example website here. It's not my website, but it's one that was in one of the screenshots earlier, headphonesd.com. So I went ahead and put them into Ahrefs and I'm looking at the site explorer here. So I'm gonna go over here to the side and click on organic keywords. So this list is all of the organic keywords that this website uh, ranks for. So we wanna go ahead and isolate the ones with featured snippets. And this is not necessarily headphonist he has the snippet, this just means that that keyword is triggering some sort of snippet. Um, so then we wanna isolate uh, only up to position five. So this is gonna show us anything we're ranking first, second, third, fourth, or fifth for. Now, if you cruise down this list, you'll notice these little, this little quotes. That means that the website that we put into the tool is actually ranking in the snippet. So for the purposes of this, you can kind of cruise past all that. You wanna to go to keywords where there actually isn't these quotes, because this means that a feature snippet exists, but you're not in it. So these are where the opportunities start. So in this example, what headset does Ninja use? So we wanna make sure that we Google this. 
So Ninja, he is a streamer, as far as I know. Okay. So yeah, we have verified that there's a snippet and we verified that we're not in the snippet. So this is an opportunity for us to rank in this spot. So in this particular case, it is a paragraph snippet and G Infinity Esports is ranking. And Headphonist is number one. So this is definitely something with potential. So essentially you would go through this list and pick out all of these keywords where the quote uh, isn't there. And that's gonna show you all of the opportunities that you have to get into the snippets. Okay, so optimizing for list snippets. These are gonna be really, really important with affiliate SEO specifically because you're gonna see these a lot on buyer's guides. So this is gonna be money keyword type of stuff that you're optimizing for. The first step is figuring out where you are in the queue. So just because Google only shows one snippet, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's only one that they're considering. There's actually a keyboard command that you can throw straight into Google that's going to show you who is ranking first for the snippet. If you put that keyboard command in, it essentially shows you what the SERP looks like without them in it. So if somebody else is second in line, you're gonna see who's second in line and third in line, et cetera, for that snippet. Then the next thing is figuring out what's triggering the snippet. So specifically for lists, I like to look at, you know, whether or not this list is near an H tag. Is it actually a bulleted or numbered list or is it just, you know, header tags? And how are the target keywords being used? Like, are they in header tags? Is it in a sentence? Is it in the list specifically? And then you wanna replicate what your competition is doing, but just do it a little bit better. Then after you do that, you just wanna re-index it and check if it is a positive, neutral, or negative result. So after you have verified that it's indexed, you can essentially use that Q command I'm gonna show you to see if you've moved up in the queue for the snippet. And you wanna repeat this process until you get it. So to be honest, finding snippets, it's a, it's a guess and check sort of thing. So there isn't an exact science to doing it. You just have to look at the clues that Google gives you and adjust and see where you land. Okay, so I'm gonna show you uh, exactly what I mean here. The first thing I'm gonna show you is what I meant about the queue. So I have this uh, keyword here from earlier, best headphones under 300. So headphonesty is ranking for them, uh, for that keyword. Let's say we're not headphonesty, we're somebody else. We wanna see where we are in the queue. So what you can do is you can put a minus sign and put the domain name of the website that you want to take out. And this is going to show you what the SERP looks like if that website didn't exist. So in this case, uh, there's only one potential snippet. Uh, so sometimes you'll see someone else come up, uh, sometimes you won't. So if you don't see anybody else come up, that means that nobody else is even being considered. So when you're doing your research, that actually only gives you one competitor that you need to look at. So when I actually see this snippet here, I see this uh, this intro content here, and I see a numbered list and an image. So these are the things that I'm gonna look for on the page to see kind of what's going on to dissect what uh, we need to do to get this snippet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is copy this just to figure out where it is on the page. This is the page we're looking at. All right, so Google is pulling this little sentence here, and it, if you notice, it's in between two H tags. You wanna see what H tags those are. So, interesting. Okay, so this is actually an H1. Yeah, okay, so these guys have more than one H1 on page. That's generally not good. Uh, but they're still getting the snippet. So, okay, so they've got an H1 here. They've got a sentence that Google really likes. They pulled that directly into the SERP and then they've got, I'm assuming an H2. Okay, so best case scenario, you in this case would want to use your keywords in an H2 tag. I'm not gonna tell you to put two H1s on page. Um, have a little sentence here that essentially it's repeating the query. So here's our top picks for the best noise canceling headphones under 300. So here's what we pick to answer this query. And then right underneath that, what's interesting about this is this is a, a list snippet, but there's no list on the page. So these uh, these header tags are just numbered. So what I would do here is recreate this number, you know, thing here, uh, list out the products, make sure there's a number in front of them and see what else I would look at here. Yeah, that's where I would start is just with those header tags and playing around with keyword insertion there. And then again, you would re-index it, see if you have moved up into the queue at all, because in this particular keyword, there was just the one potential for the snippet. So if you optimize for it, you're either gonna see yourself jump into the snippet, you're gonna see yourself jump into the number two slot, or you're gonna see no change. So if it's no change, just keep what you did and keep tweaking until you 
get what you want so you get the snippet. All right, so the next type of snippet that we have I'm gonna show you how to optimize for is paragraph snippets. So the first two steps here, they are the same as the list and it's gonna be the same for table as well. It's always figuring out where you are in the queue and figuring out what triggers the snippet. But what changes here is what you need to look for when you're looking for those triggers. So paragraph snippets, um, you're looking for how much content is included. So is it one sentence? Is it two sentences? About how many words? Stuff like that. And then see if there's any bolded words. So bolded words, you know, if they're not bolded on the actual page, Google thinks they're important enough to bold them themselves. And do they repeat the query as part of the answer or do they just answer the question? Um, and then look at the elements surrounding it, like H tags and images, and look where in the post is it pulling it from. You know, nine times out of 10 with paragraph snippets, it's gonna be pretty high up, but that's not always the case. So you wanna see where in the content it's pulling it from. And then to optimize for paragraph snippets, you're gonna look at what's triggering it, but you're gonna actually answer the question using connecting words. So you're essentially repeating the query back at Google and providing the answer all in a single sentence. So this is gonna give you something that is standalone and quotable as opposed to just an answer. Um, and then after you've done that, you're gonna re-index it and look for that positive or negative result and repeat. So showing you kind of what I mean by these connecting keywords here. So what is affiliate SEO? This is something that's triggering a paragraph snippet here. And if you look at what Google says, affiliate marketing from the SEO standpoint is, so there's that connecting word there, and then it proceeds to tell you what affiliate SEO is. So if you take a step back and look at the sentence structure, you're repeating the query and answering it all in one sentence by using that connecting word is. So again, I would look more in detail at that website. So, uh, well, first, you know, if you want to take this website out, you can see web magazine.com. Okay, so in this case, there is a second place snippet. So you've got Shane Barker. And then if you take out Shane Barker, you can see Mobidia, Mo Mo Mobidia. Anyway, you get where I'm going with this. You're able to see who's second and who's third in line for that snippet. And then you can not only base your decisions off of who's ranking first, but you can also dissect who's ranking second and third um, if you're not in one of those slots. So going back to the original query here, what is affiliate SEO? Affiliate marketing from the SEO standpoint. So I'm gonna look for that on page to figure out where it is. It actually highlighted it for you there. Okay, so affiliate marketing from the SEO standpoint is, again, there's that connecting word there. So where it's located on the page, it's pretty high up. It's above the fold, it's in the third paragraph. So it's not, you know, it's not listed right away, but it is above the fold there. And it is located next to a header tag, I'm assuming. Yeah, so it's located next to an H2 and it is the first sentence after that H2. So to optimize for this, what I would do is I would make sure that I have a relevant H2, then right underneath that answer the question uh, that the query is about using that quotable standalone connecting words type of format. And then again, just re-index that, see where you fall in the queue, is it positive or negative, and then adjust from there. All right, so the last one I'm gonna break down here for you is optimizing for table snippets. So again, that first and second step is the same, find where you are in the queue and then look at what's triggering it. But for table snippets, uh, the triggers are gonna be stuff like, is a full table showing on Google or did they cut something off? Is the table sortable? How many columns does the table have? And is it looking at qualitative or quantitative data? So qualitative data is stuff that describes something. So you can think of like maybe the color a product is, or does it include a certain feature, like yes, no, stuff like that. And then you have quantitative, which means it involves numbers. So stuff that may you know be looking at price, it may be looking at size, weight, stuff like that. So you wanna make sure that when you're replicating the table, you're using either qualitative or quantitative or both depending on what is already ranking. And then you also wanna look at where the table is within the content. Is it you know super high in the content? Is it super low? And what's surrounding it? Again, those H tags, images and stuff like that. And to optimize for this, you either wanna create a table or re-optimize an existing table based on those triggers, re-index it. Uh, is it positive or negative results? Repeat that process until you get the snippet. So again, looking at this example here, so kayak prices. Here we have a table snippet being generated, the costguys.com. If we wanted to take those guys out. Okay, so there's only one snippet uh, opportunity for this, or one potential snippet. 
All right. So they're looking at type of kayak, average price, blah, blah, blah. So here is that page. So we're looking for an actual table. Okay, so a lot of people will tell you that you have to put your snippet data at the top, but this is a case where that's not necessarily true. So this table is actually at the very bottom of the content. But as you can see here, it's super, super basic. There's only two columns. You've got the type of kayak and the average price. So if I were optimizing for this, I would probably add maybe a third column for like, I don't know, weight or something else, some sort of extra data so that you're a little bit better than the one that's ranking and make sure uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be sortable or anything like that. But just make tweaks to an existing table based on what you see ranking here. And they have a little bit of content surrounding that table in an H something, was it H2, H3? H2. But it's important to note that it's not, uh, there's no keywords in it, so you may not necessarily have to have keywords surrounding the chart. Uh, so just replicate it like that and keep re-indexing re it and checking to see uh, if you get that snippet. All right, so the key takeaways here. First and foremost, only go after things where you're actually likely to get a snippet. So if you're ranking first, second, third, fourth, or fifth, you're gonna be a uh, potential to get that snippet. And you wanna make sure you're familiar with the types of snippet and how to optimize for them. And the process for optimizing for a snippet, you know, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't change based on type outside of what you're looking for with those triggers. So the first is always to see if you're in the queue and where you are in the queue, then identifying what those triggers are and then outdoing your competition. So after you do that, you just re-index it and repeat until you get that snippet. And hopefully with a little bit of uh, perseverance, you can get them 100% of the time. So I hope you guys got something out of this video. It's one of my favorite things to do. If you're able to master it, you're definitely gonna get an increase in traffic. So hopefully all you guys are snippet snipers after this and thanks for watching.